Hello everybody, welcome to Bar Psychology's Tip of the Week. I am Bakari K. George and this week we are talking silence. Speaking silence, speaking quiet, I don't know. I'll be honest with you guys, this is my first time shooting outside. Just people staring at me. I'm very, very uncomfortable. However, if you know my system, you know that step one uh, helped me get through this. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to go ahead and shoot outside today. I had to get outside. It's nice. Um, it cool off a bit. So, yeah. The tip of the week this week is about uh, using silence uh, to project power. The thing about um, people is, is we, we pick up most of our communication non-verbal. So words are just almost like seasoning to the meal. A lot of us, when we are trying to get something or, or you know, trying to get a job, maybe you're talking to someone you like, you, you talk a lot, you know, you don't like the uncomfortable silence, the awkward pauses. They make us feel uncomfortable and we just tend to talk. This sends a lot of nonverbal communication to the person you're talking to. They could feel your shyness, your timidness, your lack of confidence, and it will bite you in the butt. So what do I mean by silence in a conversation? I don't mean just sitting there staring like a blank wall. I mean using space in conversation to project your stance, to project your stubbornness maybe, um, but to kind of project your personality. It'll get people's attention. You know, if you remember uh, in grade school, elementary school, middle school, whenever, the teacher comes in, just walks to the board, doesn't say a word, everyone kind of quiet, you know. It's natural for you to want to see what this person's up to, what are they doing, they know something we don't. All subconscious thoughts that we have that kind of bring the attention in. And you can use this to hold attention. Oh, there's the water again. Uh, ambience. Silence can also uh, answer questions for people. If it's a negative answer and you just don't reply to it, then the message is clear where you stand on that, you know? Um, if it's a request and you can't fulfill it and you feel negatively about it, just don't say anything. <laughs> it also engages other people's nonverbal communication skills. You know, it kind of causes them to uh, watch your body language a little bit more, opening them up to suggestions, you know, um, non-verbal suggestions, of course, but it kind of opens them up. It offers empathy as well. If something embarrassing has happened or uh, someone's in a sorrowful mood, maybe they're mourning someone that they've lost, you can go up and try to talk to them, but how can you convey with words the feeling, you know? Silence can do that. Just give them a look in the eye, maybe a head nod. And just enjoy a, a moment of silence with them. And uh, it's also polite. You know, there's a golden rule out there that a lot of people forget the golden rules. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you is one. Um, the one I'm discussing here is if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. You know, people remember negativity more than positivity. And if you say something negative, you know, who's to say you're not going to need something from that person in the future and their only impression of you is a negative one when you could have just as easily been quiet, been silent in that moment, not said anything. Everyone knows what you meant and where you stand with the issue, but there's no negativity involved with it. I'm going to get into some personal ways I use silence in the members only jacket, which is the uh, Bar Psychology Families uh, After Hours Spot, the BP Fams Spot. Um, kind of go over some, some in-depth personal technique and, and just some more background into the tip of the week. So if you're interested in that, click the link below. It'll send you over to uh, my page. You uh, join the group. You'll also get a free uh, three-step guide to the Bar Psychology System, how to project charm and charisma at will um, and a lot of these steps uh, I, I kind of build all of these tips along those steps so if you don't have that already it's free go check it out it's basically the system I learned while bartending um, to charm people yeah 
So check that out. Join the members only jacket. Get some of the uh, after hours info and content and, and tips. I'll get into some of those a little bit later. So let's move on to when to use silence as a technique. Because it's not always appropriate to maintain silence. Um, sometimes you need to be out there and, and, and kind of more proactive about how you interact with people. There are times when silence is necessary. For instance, hostile territory. You know, let's say you're in a, a situation where most of the people around you don't feel the way you feel and go against the way you feel. This is when it's good to kind of be closer to lips. Oh, my cars. This is when it's good to be kind of closer to lips. You want to be reading your surroundings, observing your surroundings, gauging the level of danger you're in, gauging the level of competence of your opponents. You know, this is when you'd want to kind of be quiet and take a more reactionary uh, strategy. Let's say new engagements, right? New engagements. If you have downloaded the checklist and you do know uh, step two, which is to be present with new engagements, you need to be taking in clues and details about how to connect with the person you're talking to. It's uh, very, very difficult to do while, while talking. Um, that's actually one of the hardest things about bartending is talking and working and trying to focus. But uh, in general, you can get a lot farther with your clue collection and your strategy development when you're when you're quiet, quieter when meeting new people. Which as introverts, we don't really have a problem with. We kind of preach into the choir here. Another time is when you're in a tough stalemate. Let's say you're trying to buy a car and you know you can get a car for a certain price, but the dealer for whatever reason won't come down. Just stop talking. Sit there, stratum, them, stop talking. You'd be surprised at the results this gets. First one to speak in a stalemate loses. So if you can hold that silence stubbornly and, and consistently and not say anything, you could get an edge on the negotiation. When dealing with extroverted people, if you're in a group of people and they're all extra, oh, I have a bug. I have a bug. <laughs> if you're in a group of people and they're all extroverted, I'm missing. Um, you know, use their energy against them. Almost like jujitsu, mental jujitsu, conversational jujitsu. They're going to come in with all this energy. You retreat back into like a more quieter, introverted role, which is natural to us. And then when they address you or get close to you, pick up that momentum and turn them on their head with it. Very, very powerful technique. And also when you're outgunned. Now, what do I mean by outgunned? Now, I study conversation and conversationalism. I, I really enjoy and consider myself um, a conversationalist. And as such, obviously I don't have the most talent in conversation. There are Michael Jordans out there of conversation walking around. And when you encounter them, it's best to kind of keep a little bit quieter. Maybe you, know, maybe you can learn something. Take notes. Study how they interact with the people around them. Study their body language. Um, that's really, when you get that sense that you're around someone much smarter than you, a lot of us tend to try to talk to prove how smart we actually are to them. All that does is prove how dumb we are, <laughs> or how much dumber we are than them. It also kind of seeks their approval and shows them that we're seeking their approval, which is not a good place to be in an engagement. So when you're around people that are a little bit smarter than you, you know, you're outgunned mentally, you're in Florida, away from the street, then, uh, yeah, take a quieter stance. All right, now let's move on to how to use it properly, how to actually use it. Um, and it all boils down to body language. If you are going to take on the, the silent treatment, the quieter role, then you need to be more expressive with your body language, with your head movements with your eye contact, with your smiles. You know, last week we talked about eye contact. The week before that, we talked about um, smiling. And honestly, and actually for October, we're gonna get into some more body language mechanics. Um, so this is kind of a segue into that, which is the power of silence. Um, so yeah, you wanna use it in conjunction with more expressive body language, more intense eye contact, bigger smiles. Um, more confidence, better posture. This, these are how you do that. If you are remaining silent and kind of avoiding eye contact and slouching where you sit, and 
you know, you're not conveying confidence, you're, you're actually doing the opposite. And a lot of us do this naturally, you know, we, we do avoid the eye contact, we don't necessarily smile at people we don't know, and, um, you know, maybe we crouch, maybe we don't, but that's the, the, the trick to using silence as a powerful tool. You have to change your body language output in order to, you know, project that power. And also, if you're going to do it, have a strategy behind it. Don't just say, I'm going to be quiet now because I don't feel like talking. Say, okay, this guy is smarter than me and that guy over there is extroverted. I'm going to be quieter for now to start. Ramp it up with the extroverted guy. Have him do the heavy lifting with the smarter guy. And I'm going to sneak around the back of the conversation and whisper in the smarter guy's ear about what I actually need. There is a quick you know, fictional strategy I just put together, but have a plan if you're going to be the strong, silent type. Don't just do it for the sake of doing it. Um, in a bar, if you're trying to get someone's attention, do it with the strategy, with the with, with a plan to, to invoke conversation. Do it with a plan to get them to come over or to go over to them and start a conversation. Don't just do it to look cool or to think you look... And, uh, yeah, we're going to wrap that up that's the tip of the week be the strong silent type less is more sometimes when it comes to conversation and don't be afraid of the awkward pauses in fact use the awkward pauses to inflict awkwardness on the person you're talking to see how awkward they get see where they are at use it as a personality test you know when you quiet down on people how do they get on you um, use it to see how they react anyway um, if you are a, a Bar Psychology, a BP fam member, I'll see you after hours over in the members only spot. You can find that in your email. Um, for everyone else, click the link, join the members only jacket. If not, I'll catch you next week with another tip of the week. Thanks for watching. I guess I'm supposed to say smash that like button and subscribe. Like, subscribe if you want. My people get it in their email, so there's that. Anyway, I'll catch you next week. Thank you.